All right. Praise God. Jesus bless this message in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. All right, guys, if you go through what we've been putting out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today, um, study all that. God's a God of order and we're staying in order. Okay. And yesterday on here, we talked about your faith. We're in James. Your faith without works is dead. The faith that people claim they have will include works. So I'm trying to tell you, if you want to say, I've got all this faith, I am a believer. I am a believer. Not I just believe. I'm a believer. That's the difference in having faith and not having faith. My, Jesus said, my own people don't know what it means to believe. It's not just head knowledge. It's head knowledge and heart. He said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, okay, that's when it will start manifesting through what you do. That's your works. So your faith, you say you have without the works, if the works isn't there, then you need to go back and work on your actual faith that you claim you have because it's not there. Your faith without works is dead. The works is obeying God's commands. And it's not just 10 commands. It's everything he says to do. Um, he'll say, forsake not assuming thyself together. That's a command. That's not a question or a suggestion. It's a command. Be of good courage. That's a command. Uh, put this sin down. Command. Start doing these things. He's trying to show you how to transform your life to be Christ-like. Okay? Let's go ahead and erase this. And we talked about the power of your tongue. How it can destroy or build up powerful little weapon we have uh, in our bodies, man. Can destroy the your body physically. You can speak curses on yourself. You can speak curses on other people. Okay? It can destroy your personal body. And it can destroy the whole body of Jesus Christ, which is all of us. So be careful how you use that powerful little weapon called your tongue. Okay? And don't forget, this Friday night, we go into the barn. And everybody, that's Google Meets. You know, some of y'all do Zoom. We do Google Meets. It's another classroom that got opened up when the world was shut down with you know what. Um, it's called Google Meets. You have to have the Google Chrome app. Other than that, you just go on to JesusDoers.com and click on the link under the red barn and come on in. So it's Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fridays is more just prayer. We come into that room, you popping on, you logging on from 8 to 8.30. We're fellowshipping. That's what we do from 8 to 8.30. 8.30, we'll play a worship song. We'll start praying. You're praying. Any, any prayer requests you have, there's a comment section in there. You just go ahead and type your prayer requests out. And we are all just praying over the world, over each other, over our families. We are praying together. We pray together. That's what we're doing there. Saturday and Sunday, we study in everything we put out here all this week. Make sure you get it. Make sure you understand it. You know, some people go to church and they walk out and they don't even know what they just heard and they all confused. They still confused. Well, you will not be confused here if you pay attention. That's why Jesus drew every single one of you here. He's sick of the confusion. Satan's the author of confusion. There ain't no confusion up in here. So if you want to know the Lord, you want to know without a shadow of a doubt that if you came out in the skin today, you go straight to God, then you need to pay attention. Okay. All right. We're going to finish up in James today. We're in James chapter 5. Oh boy, let me erase this. Hold up. We are in James 5. Um, Monday, we started in Philippians. And then the rest, we just kind of broke James down. Let's see if you can see that. Yes, you can. All right. So, we're going to talk about... The rich oppress the rich oppressors. Will be judged. Now we were learning about fruits of the spirit last week, and this is the say it's a it's the whole everything else is a continuation. The fruits is how God wants to transform your life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about other people, how you think, what you say, and what you do to help other people. 
okay? The rich oppressors will be judged. James 5. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Saboth. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Okay. Let's talk about that. Well, let me open this up. Let's talk about that. He's talking about here the dangers. Of money. Okay. That's exactly what he's talking about. The consistent scriptural witness is that money, even though it's very necessary for us to have, we live in a world that we have to have money. Every one of us got to have it to buy food, to pay our bills. Uh, we got to have clothes unless you know how to make them. You got to buy the material to make them. You know, we, that's, that's what we do. Uh, money's necessary and is a blessing from God. Okay. But it can also be a very dangerous commodity. It's how you use it. It's how you use it. It's not the fact that you have it. It's how you use it. Okay? Things we think that we own may really own us. You understand? Things you think you own, money really owns a lot of people. Money owns you. Okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you. And God calls us to put material goods into proper perspective and to use them wisely under his direction. So what do you do? You recognize. If I spell recognize wrong, that's recognize. I don't think I got an S or a Z. It don't matter. Recognize. You recognize the fact that all material possessions are going to perish. And I'm going to tell you what else. They have no eternal value. They will perish and has zero eternal value. And you know how many people go to church or come here? For many of you, that for you, this is your church. Supposed to be anyway. It's where God's drawn you to. Those of you that come to fellowship, you know, as a building, don't make the church. It's where you're getting fed, where you're actually learning from, where you're getting fed. That's your church. Where you're actually getting help. That's what a church does. Okay. How many of you actually help? Help us back. Think about that. How many of you actually give God what belongs to Him? Come on now, church. He's trusting you with what you have don't belong to you. Everything we have, God owns. So, that money that you have, that you're like, well, I can't help that ministry because I, I, I don't have it. And God will help them. God helps us through you. And that's what God is telling you. Okay? Like Africa, for example. God put that on we are Jesus doers. God is taking care of Africa. Nam Nambibia. Not Nigeria. We got Nambibia. We have the garbage dump. 55 families that live in a garbage dump. Yeah, God is taking care of them through me and you. And that's how God works. And you, the church is taking care of this ministry through you. And that's how it goes. Okay, God's saying, well, your money you have to you people that are, that it's become a God to you. He's telling your money will perish. And your money has zero 
eternal value. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Your heart is where the eternal value comes from. Are you doing right by the right people, by with what God gave you? Are you helping his kingdom? It's God's kingdom. Are you doing that, y'all? Are you doing right by what God trusts you with? Understand that. Okay, you need to understand this. The next thing we do is we avoid. See, recognize. Avoid. Write this down, stuff in your study notebook, y'all. Avoid unnecessary. Acquisition. I can't say the word. Acquisition. In other words, acquired wealth can bring some unwelcome problems into your life. Avoid unwelcome problems in your life. Greediness and stinginess, y'all. Thievery, that's a, that's a demonic spirit. And you embrace simplicity. You recognize, you avoid, and you embrace simplicity. Simplicity and poverty, they're, they're not the same thing, okay? Simplicity is uh, simply acting responsibly with what God has given you. In other words, act. Again, that's something you do responsible, responsibly. With money, and <laughs> we're talking about that specifically right now, that God trusts you with. Okay? All right, let's move on now. We're in still James 5. We're moving on to verse 7. That's right there is 1 through 6. These are verses... One through six. Bam. Okay. Now we're going to move on to verse seven. Talking about be, be patient and persevering. Okay. You want to write that down. Verse seven. Let's put be patient and persevering. And I broke that down to you just the other day. You got to watch the videos this week, so I'm going to keep repeating myself over and over and over. Verse 7, therefore, be patient. Now, that's another command, y'all. That's a command. It's not only the Ten Commands. Anywhere in the Bible you see them say, be this, do that, don't do this, forsake not this, whatever. It is a command. Trying to help you be this new Christ-like person, trying to help you shape your life. Be patient and persevering. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts. There's another command. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Here you go, another command. Do not, does that look like a question? No. Do not grumble. Another command. Matt. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Okay, so here, it's very easy, y'all, to get discouraged when you look at what's going on in the world, ain't it? Very, very easy to get discouraged when you when you watch what's going on. A lot of people, y'all, have gotten rich by exploiting other people, taking advantage of them, 
I'm not going to get too deep in it on my video because they will ban me. They love, to, they love to put me in YouTube jail around here. Every time I seem to talk about things other people are talking about on here, they want to throw me in jail. But you know what I'm talking about with these kids, the elites, the Grammys, you got uh, satanic worship, all kinds of stuff, pedophilia, all kinds of stuff going on. And these people have gotten rich by exploiting other people and taking advantage of these people. Just like the guy in my video comment the other day that made a fake, just like him, it's all over the place, man, in many forms. The guy that made a fake account and called himself We Are Jesus Doers 99 and hit a lot of comments to y'all, acting like he was me, giving you this long, drawn-out words from, from, well, he said it was from God, but it was from his God, Satan, lying to you that the devil's going to destroy you and your family and all this and that if you don't give money to Nigeria. Put the link up there for you and everything, didn't he? Taking advantage of you, y'all. That's what that guy was doing. If you see my video yesterday, that's the difference between heavenly wisdom and demonic wisdom. Now, I'll be asking you questions on this stuff Saturday and Sunday in the barn. So pay close attention to these videos, y'all. Because God wants you to learn and understand, y'all. So we can, when this internet gets down, boom, when it goes down, you have enough knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and discernment to go help other people. Okay, so pay attention. We are Christians, me and you. And Christians are not supposed to get depressed about the corruption and the dishonesty, the dishonesty that's going on around us. Don't let it depress you. Instead, we are to pray for our society, which we come in the barn and do on Friday nights, big time. Okay, and we are to, um, we're to be the salt and the light for it. That's what we are to be. Salt gives it flavor. Light busts through darkness, right? That's what we are to be. That's what God is raising us up here to be. Because you know that we live in a fallen world. That's what we live in. But Jesus is going to return. Understand this. He's coming back. And he's going to put things right. And you better believe that too. He will put things right. And this ain't no fairy tale, y'all. This is called reality. Reality. Okay, go on down to 10. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Do you know why he says that? Because I'm not going to call myself a prophet. I don't know what I am. But I know God has shown me prophecy. And my old people know it because we're watching this stuff happen. God showed me this earthquake in the Middle East eight months before it happened. And he showed me an eight. That's all he showed me was an eight. I knew it was an earthquake in the Middle East. I didn't know what that eight meant. I saw the eight. I had Igor write it down about four o'clock in the morning. He's like, we think this is an eight pointer. I said, I don't know if this is an eight pointer. What it means, I don't know. But then it happens. It's a big one. I told him that it's a big one. I saw it in the Middle East. And it was an eight. We go back and look. It happened eight months after God gave it to me. Okay, so he shows me prophecy. So whenever he shows this prophecy, well, you, then we got to have patience and on all that because when you tell people, when you help people understand what God has showed you, that don't mean God's going to do it that year or he may not do it uh, right in that very month or week. And then people's like, well, she said that a year ago and it ain't happened yet. Like God showed me darkness two times. Hasn't happened yet. He showed it to me two years ago. He showed it to me this past year. So, oh, baby, it's coming. It's coming. I don't know how. I don't know when. But it's coming. So we have to have patience and endure a lot of backlash. Da, da, da. Oh, it'll come. God didn't give me exactly when this stuff is going to happen, except for with the earthquake. He told me at eight. There's a couple things that he showed me that he gave me a, not an exact date, but he gave me a time frame like two years ago, two years ago, about seven, eight months before the fall. You can go back to my videos. You can find them in my group. They know God was showing me these volcanoes blowing. We ain't had a vice in a volcano blow. Really? I ain't paid no attention to it in my lifetime. It was no big deal to me. Never seen one. I'm sure one has hit and miss, but not in, I didn't pay no attention to it. Um, he was showing me volcanoes blowing. That fire coming up. He was showing me fireballs, meteorites, stuff like that. All kind of fire, all kind of stuff up in the sky, man. He says, it's going to start this fall. 
fall, fall. He kept telling me, fall, 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 fall. And I kept telling my group, it's going to happen this fall, y'all. And I had to wait one month, two months, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Finally, here it comes, September. That starts our fall. La Palma starts blowing. October, still the next month in our fall, when God said you're going to start seeing this stuff happen this fall, and you're going to start seeing it. It starts there, and it's going to start escalating and intensifying and increasing, and it is. So September started the La Palma and some other volcano blowing at the time. And then October started the meteorite showers all up in your news. Everybody's outside watching the meteorites start to fly around. CME started blowing all the time at that point. Started hearing a CME hit and miss one or two every three or four months. Now it's like almost weekly. Intensifying, increasing. You're hearing asteroids flying by constantly. You're getting it in your news because they're getting that close to Earth. We got a meteor shower coming. We got meteor uh, asteroid belts. We're in. Come on, y'all. It's increasing and intensifying until we start literally seeing them slam into the Earth. You will see that too. So the point is, is when God shows you prophecy... For the person he's giving it to, we got to be an example of suffering because you'll get people say, well, it ain't happened yet. So you're fake. You're this, you're that. And we got to have patience because it will happen. Okay. So look at 11. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord. That the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, or with any other oath. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Okay, he goes on in 13, he's talking about meeting some specific needs. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Are you suffering out there? He said, pray. Talk to God. That's your relationship. Is anyone cheerful? Well, if you're happy and cheerful, he said, let him sing songs. Sing to the Lord. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord. So elder, that doesn't mean an old person. It means somebody who's spiritually more mature than you are, spiritually. Okay, and the prayer of the faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay, we know we confess to Jesus Christ, but confess to each other. Pray for one another. You just heard it right there. So God has given, and back to these elders of the church, which I am one. That's why I saw Jesus when I was with him in the desert as a little kid, teaching them older men, because he was spiritually more mature than those older men were. And this is what he anointed me to do. OK, um, God's given elders in the church tremendous spiritual power, y'all. OK, so if somebody's sick, you can go to the elders of the church and receive prayer and anointing with that oil. And if you do this, the prayer of the faith is going to supernaturally heal that person. Okay, and, and bondages are going to be broken and all that, but it's got to be someone with faith, real faith, not just words of faith. They got to be a lot of action to back up them words, y'all. A lot of a lot of action. I've talked to a lot of people that claim to have all this faith, and they know action to back up nothing. And God sees it, he knows it, and I know it. And you know it. If you got faith, you'll have a lot of action backing that word up. Faith is an action word. Okay. And there's when as far as getting healed, there's a there's very real healing and delivering power in prayer, which is another reason God commands to forsake not assembling thyself together, which is why we go into that barn three nights a week. And if you have Facebook, some of you do, some of you don't, but if you do, we just opened up a group and called it not the, just called it barnyard. Okay, or you can look me up, send me a friend request, and then I can get you hooked up with a barn. I don't have a lot of time personally to go in that barn uh, on Facebook, um, but there is some people that God told me to stick in there to pray over y'all, 
uh, during the weeks, the days that we don't have Google Meets. Keep fellowship going every night if you need to. It's right there. But there's power in prayer when we come together and pray, especially in the ones that are actually abiding in God, obeying God. God's power can be released, y'all, to heal and restore through that, the prayer of faith. Okay, that's what he's saying. Go on down to, uh, where am I at? Still in 16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Who's a righteous man? Just because you love God with your mouth? Because you go sit in a church? Because you read the Bible? You pray? Does that make you righteous? Well, you got half a heart. You got to get the other half of that heart. Now you become a doer. You take all that you got there and you become a doer. You start reaching out to help other people. You witness to other people. You help your church. You help the poor like we do Africa. You actually be start to put your faith to action. That is some, that's what the part most of the church is missing, putting their faith to action. That's a real problem with God, y'all. 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So there is power in prayer, which is what James is trying to tell you. Write it down. There is real power, not in just by yourself. The more prayers, like Jesus told me, when you pray, it takes you to heavenly realms. When you worship, Straight to the throne of God. And I'm not talking about just worship by singing songs. Praise the Lord. That's, that's a form of worship. But the part of the worship the church is missing is actually doing the things God told you to do. The part of worship in the church that is missing is being an actual doer of your faith. Doing. That's the part most of the people miss. And that's true worship. Worship in spirit and truth. You worship in God, that's the spirit. And truth means you're doing everything he told you to do. You're not, not, not letting anything become your God but God. Never, ever, 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 y'all, underestimate or even minimize, y'all, the power of God working through prayer. Uh uh Believe in prayer. That releases the power of God. You know what it can do, y'all? It changes reality. Yes, it does. Uh, turn the course of nations, man. There could be something coming at us right now with all these bomber jets from... Well, I don't want to say the word and get myself in trouble. You know, you know what country the bear is. Bomber jets flying towards America with 30... Uh, I'm talking about bomber airplanes with possible NUK, E, you know, whatever on it. The other day, with 30 fighter jets behind it flying into America. When we come together in that barn, y'all, all 60, 70 of us, and we in there praying Friday night, they could be flying this way right at that very moment, and that prayer could cause them to make a U-turn, turn around, go back home. Prayer changes reality. Turns the course of nations and turns things around. You understand? It's very important. Okay, the Bible says that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Uh, what did he say? Of a righteous man. Are you really righteous? Just because you go sit in a church and you listen to the sermon, you listen to the word, you might be writing it down, but are you really righteous? Are you doing the things God told you to do? Are you? You doing right by God? You doing right by God's people? Just praying itself don't make you righteous. James is trying to tell you, being a doer, along with your faith, that completes your faith. Be a doer. 
Otherwise, the faith you say you have, you ain't got no action to back it up. It's dead. It's useless. And that's an ocean full of people that ain't going to make it. That really think they are. And I saw that. Verse 16. The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. This means that Christians who, who know how to pray in faith and that are actually doing the things God said to do, you know what, can really change things. That person's prayer, y'all, can really change things. But you people out there robbing God, robbing yourself. That's what you're doing. Robbing yourself. That's the truth. God is the most powerful, most loving, most generous, most giving, most heartfelt, cared, cares about you more than anybody being in the universe. You understand that? And you can move the hand of God to accomplish things through prayer that could never be done by natural means. He's the most loving, generous being in existence, man. But I'm going to tell you what he is. Even in the church, he's the most unloved, most untrusted, most uncared about, most disrespected, most hated, most mocked, most made fun of, be it de uh, being in existence. Even from his own church. That's why he's trying to teach you here, y'all, how to really, really, really love him. In every single aspect of things that we have to face us in this life. Don't let anything in this life grip you to where you're, you're being uh, taken away from God and his kingdom. His kingdom is the church on this earth, y'all. God's kingdom, the, heaven of, the kingdom of heaven is right here. Right, He says closest right here. It's the body, the body of Christ. It's his church. We are the church. We have to go, and we got to do things that God tells us to do. We have to grow the ministries and get it out to more people. We go, we're after souls, man. So you got to help it, okay? You do your part, all right? There's power in prayer. Go to 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth... And someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Because you got people in the church wandering away all the time. There's more wanderers in the church than anywhere. Flounders, I call them. Floundering around. They don't trust God. With their mouths, but this your mouth means nothing, man. Anything you say out your mouth means squat, unless you got the action to back it up. Okay? He said, let him, in verse 20, know that he who turns a sinner from the air of his way will save a soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. You got a traveler. Uh, leaving a familiar road, taking a twisted path. That'll cause him to lose his way, right? You take a wrong turn, man. You're like, where in the world am I? Missing the mark. I used that term to you a couple weeks ago. A sinner, missing the mark. Someone who's a sinner. What is a sinner? Someone who uh, is devoted. Devoted to sin, and it's by your own choice. If you walk in sins against God, I'm trying to tell y'all all week, you are choosing it. You can't blame Satan for it, man. Satan can't twist your arm and make you sin. No, you got to understand, y'all, this gift God gave you, created you with. It's called free will. Free will. Satan can throw stuff in front of you. But he can't twist your arm and make you sin. You sin by your own choice, man. And when you choose to walk with God, you choose that too. Okay? So, 
somebody who reaches out to the lost is what this is talking about. And yeah, there's many Christians in the church that are lost. Matter of fact, most of them are. It's a very narrow road of people actually going back to God. So if a Christian backslides, can you backslide? Yes, you can. And if you try to denote that, go against that, then you haven't read the Bible. I mean, it's evidence. So don't embarrass yourself, y'all. Come on here with silly comments. Please read the Bible before you try to bust out an argument. Something you heard one of your preachers say, you can't backslide. Many preachers that ain't no hell. And a lot of preachers saying that junk. But you go ahead and get your face in the Bible like we do here. So if a Christian backslides or gets involved in sin, a sinful situation, you and I, as fellow Christians, we are to reach out in love and attempt to restore that person. Hey, come back, man. Hey, hey, hey. And we're to reach out to the lost, sharing with them the saving message of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do those things, you know what we did, y'all? We touched the heart of God. And you and I are on this earth to touch the heart of God. Why do I say you touch the heart of God when you reach the lost? Because like I told you guys, when I was with Jesus, he explained to me, me and you, we are his heart. And I'm not talking about no metaphorical stuff. I'm talking about you, you don't even know who you really are. You really don't. You know who you are in this physical realm, but you don't even know who you are. Why Jesus loves you so much, man. How could, why would he love me that much to come and suffer and die for me? Because you are his heart. And he wants his heart back. Okay? And Satan hates God so much, which is you, you're, you're a part of God's heart. He's coming to kill you, destroy you. Not because your name is Sam, Tina, or Pinkton, or whatever. Because you're God's heart. Satan wants to destroy you because he hates God. Therefore, he hates you. I'm not saying you are God. I'm saying you are part of him. You're his heart. Okay? So it's necessary, y'all, to take these lessons God is giving you here. Understand them. Ask him for you want to, You ain't just listen to me, teach man. You, get to, you go for understanding. And then you should quickly start manifesting actions. You understand that? Actions. And you're running out of time. Tick tock, tick tock, says the Lord. All right. God bless you all. I will see y'all maybe tomorrow on here. Definitely tomorrow night in the barn. Go to jesusdoers.com. Look for the big red barn. There's a link under there. Come in the room. And we are doing some heavy intercessory prayer tomorrow night. Then you come back in Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are studying all this, all this, quizzing. And Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Same thing, quizzing. Okay? Anything you guys need to be a doer to help our ministry, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. It's in the description on the videos. If you look under the title of the video, look at the video, look at the title under, you'll see where it's got views and stuff. It'll say more. Click that and it'll bring up the description. That's how you can help us back, help us grow, help us do so we can continue to do what we're doing. So thank you all that are. Okay? And that's the only ways I have to do it. Okay, if any of you like, like some of y'all are asking me about some E this or E that, I don't even know what that is, man. I got a P.O. box, okay, y'all? Send in a P.O. box. All right, God bless you all. Thank those of you that are helping us back and helping us grow and helping us with Africa, too. Thank you guys so much. And we're here for you. If y'all need us in the email section, I'm trying to tell you, there's three of y'all last week that um, wanted to exchange a phone call, and I've been waiting on your phone number, and I ain't got it. So if you want that call, man, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays are the best days for me to, to make those phone calls, like I did with some of y'all yesterday. I spent at least six hours on the phone with different ones of y'all yesterday. Okay, but when we get into the weekend, I can't make those calls. Can't make them, because I'm busy in the weekends, but really busy in the weekends, man, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. When we go to that barn, forget the phone calls. Okay, so reach back out to me. My email is right there in the description of videos. I will reach out to you, okay? God bless you all. If you slipped up today, repent, man, and make a decision to start stepping out in faith, y'all, and do right by God. Do right by God's people and do right by yourself. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Jesus loves you, y'all. Understand that. God bless you. See y'all, some of y'all tomorrow night in the barn.